were laying in bed this morning at 7.30, you know, just as you do. And then my phone started ringing. I'm thinking, who is this? He's like, hi, it's the electrician here. We'll be there in 20 minutes to install your PowerPoint. And we're like, oh, God, okay, righto. So we've just <laughs> mission moded it. He must be running late because he's five minutes late. What? At this stage. But basically, we're getting a PowerPoint off the inverter so we don't have to open the chair all the time um, to get to the inverter and turn it on and whatnot. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is, what, what's this going to plug into there? Yeah, so apparently, I don't really know exactly how they work, but um, these can be wired to a PowerPoint. So what we're doing is yeah, so okay. we can actually have this shut and have the sofa on and not yeah, have okay. to... Yeah, so we're going to put a PowerPoint there yeah. and put the lead and the plug into there. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. um, when we're off grid, we can use that for 240 then. So we've had all my just turn up and literally put in the power point to our inverter so it makes it a bit easier for us to access it literally took him what 10 minutes 15 Not minutes long at all. yeah it literally rocked up and whacked her in and away we go so that was nice quick and easy so basically all he's done is just cut a bit of a hole out here he's put in a new power power point so got the two there so it's basically you just yeah put the box in there and he's run a 240 wire straight into the inverter just literally plugs in and that'll literally just yeah power up that give us two ports at the front that we can use when we're off grid and saves us pulling all this bloody seat and sofa and everything off and it just makes it so much easier but uh our next mission is so this little device here is obviously just a on and off switch for the inverter so you normally just flick it over and hold it and a little green light comes on and that activates the inverter. But having a small child running around the caravan, we don't want to put it down here with any more of these power points. Um, so we're thinking about up here, we've had a look at the light for all the switches up here. We've just pulled that off and then behind there's a nice little cavity and it actually runs all the way down the wall and out the, out the bottom of this hole here which runs into the battery system and everything else. So, hypothetically, that should go through there, down the bottom, pull that out and plug it straight in the inverter. I'll make a small little incision on the uh, at the wall there and that will sit nice and flush up on the wall. So it'll be nice and high, out of the way of little bubba and look nice and neat and tidy the way we like it. It could just be me, but I still think we should run that cord first and then cut a hole because what if it doesn't go all the way to the bottom hypothetically and then that connects over there somewhere or something you know what i mean yeah well, we can and then we'll end up with a big hole in the wall i just don't want to feed that down and then maybe break it or something i know what you mean like it'd be nice to know if we can or can we pull off that back panel so we can actually see the opening see the hole well worst case we should be able to do that as a, a backup if it doesn't go all the way through after drilling the hole we can pull that off and feed it in where else would they go? That's conduit there, on the back here. There's no conduit there though. Oh, pull it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, go again. I can see it moving. Okay. There you go. Well, I'm pretty sure we should just be able to feed it down. We should be able to feed it down. Just send it. <laughs> but yeah, worst case, because there's another panel on the other side here. So there's, it's like a five mil panel, this wall. Hang on. Hang on. We can see it here. So you've got about a 5mm panel here on this wall. And then on the back is obviously the toilet and bathroom, which is probably another, no, well, close to 5mm again. But there's there's a couple of little screws that you can undo and you can almost just about peel that back. So if we can't get that piece down here, so it's like a, an old school, um, it's an old school phone connection, internet connection. The only thing, it's a bit tight because it's got that clip on top. But um, I had a bit of a go there before and it, it 
starts to go, but then obviously getting as far down to there. And not knowing what's in there. I don't think it's because of what's in there. It's the fact of being able to try and push something that's hard. Already did. So we'll try and feed that up through the hole. And if we can get it up to here, we'll tape it How off. How long is that? We probably only need maybe one, maybe two more. Oh, God. <laughs> we'll need two. Two, at least one more. I really hope it just pops out at the top and we're like, yay, it worked. Come on, baby. It's getting close, I can hear it. Yeah. Yeah? There it is. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes. You. That's going to make things so much easier. Let's drill through some caravan wires, hell yeah. Alright, have a go. Just be mindful, this is only a drill and a Stanley knife. Yours are being in a caravan. Yeah, no jigsaws here. How close is it? I'm gonna go over more. So just FYI, I think that's pretty tiny considering I cut that with a Stanley knife. Anyway, she will fit in there nice and snug. It's just a matter of popping this wire in and then she'll be nice and flush. It's gonna look so good. Right up against the wall. Honestly, it wouldn't have bothered me if we put the switch down there because it was all in the same place. But Jack, he's like, finally, he's just starting to figure out the knobs on the, um, what do you call it? The oven and stuff. Oh, yeah. and Draw Imagine that and, and then the inverter sitting there, especially if we've got shopping on it because we didn't need it and then it's heating up and then we break it like all because of Jack, you know. Nope. No, thank you. I don't know if you can see that label on the inside. Gorilla. It is the bomb. So like we haven't got a lot left, but these come out and they're quite thick. And I remember when we bought it and paid for it, it was some stupid price for one roll. I remember thinking it was stupid expensive, but like there is nothing that this doesn't fix. Yeah, I've used this you. as well. It's so thick and like block out in a sense. I've covered all the little LED blue lights around the place so that at night time. So it's like a disco in here. I don't like it. I can't sleep when it's really bright. So things like the smoke alarm, the little... Go for the pool, babe. Oh, the pool already. You don't need to cover it? Nope. <sighs> She's in. All right. Over the truth. Because oh. when you live in a caravan, you don't have all the things you ever need. So this is my rule at the moment. <laughs> On tape measure. It's a nice straight line. I thought, well, what better thing to use a chopping board with perfect size. But, um, Sorry if you can hear Jack too. He's found a shaker egg and he loves it. Yeah. So basically this goes down on the bottom where the power points go. Under so there. It'll sit in here. Yeah. And make everything tidy. But because that power point they put in is a little bit lower. 45 mil to be exact. So I've just measured that. So I'm just going to cut that off. And then I'm going to wrap that back over the top. Sean's going to staple it back on. And then just put that straight back on where it came from. And it won't look any different to what it was. Apart from the fact that we have access to the inverter. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Alright. No, but huh? you never go. No, because that's how you end up with all the excess bits. You want to get rid of them. It's 
like wrapping school books again. See? And then that bottom edge we'll put on the bottom so it helps hold it if my staples aren't strong enough. So I'll just try one. Oh, here's a question. Yeah. Oh. We'll try one and see if it's strong enough. It might be. I don't know. No. <laughs> I didn't think it would be. Hang on, try one more time. The pie is pretty uh, thick. <laughs> yes. Ooh. Get an elbow grease on. Considering we don't have too many tools to play with, the old desk staple is going pretty bloody well. Happy days. Oh, you like a ball one. Perfect. Hell yeah. Just put that edge on the bottom because my staples are probably less supported than those ones. Right, so we never got around to actually showing you the inverter and the battery setup and our nifty little switch that we're super happy about. Uh, so we're basically just gonna run through it now because we got so caught up. We got it done on Lucinda um, all the way through, all the way up through here to Cairns. So I'll do a quick run through now and show you exactly what the uh, setup we have is. So we've got both N and drive systems. So we've got the inverter and the battery. So the inverter itself is a 2000 watt. Um, and that's the 200 amp hour N and drive battery that we originally had in the car but just was overkill, it was just too much for the car because we're only running things every now and again for charging like GoPros and drones and uh, running the fridge. So we've now downsized that to a 125 amp hour um, and that gives us more, plenty of power. We're getting up to about a week straight. If we left everything on, we can get about a week out of it, which is crazy. So 200 amp hour is good for the caravan and all the things we want to run. Um, the good thing about these, you can install another one and they can dual up together you can run them together so they can give you 400 amp hours uh for us for what we've done we haven't really given it a really good run um but obviously the more we do off grid which we really really want to do uh, we'll start to learn what we can get away with and if we have to upgrade later on but it's good to know that we do have that other option there too so that's basically the system it's quite simple it's easy um there's nothing really much to it but it's enough for us to do what we really want to do with this caravan so it's an off-road fully off-road setup caravan and that's basically what we really want to do is take it off-road test its limits and go to those remote places and really experience what australia's got to give i just wanted to chime in and just say that there is a lot of things online and people use really high-tech systems in their caravans and mm. You know, like I know for us, when we first started researching what we could and couldn't use, we honestly thought that we had to do that and we thought we were gonna be thousands of dollars out of pocket, but overall, you, it's gonna be based on your system. So when you go traveling, you may not need a $10,000 system, you may need a $1,000 system. Everything varies. Jack's waking up. You can get Jack? Okay. So the little guy's just woken up. We try and get everything done while he's sleeping, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why we're doing this video right now. Hence why there's so many cuts. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get the system that you want. So we didn't even have an inverter to begin with and we weren't sure if we were going to run one, but we figured out by being in the caravan the things that we can't use on 12 volt that we needed to 40. For example, the Mac um, mm. or the microwave. And the main reason for the microwave is his bottles. It's only 30 seconds, but it makes life easy if you haven't got access to hot water. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just make sure you do your research. If you've got any questions, you know, chuck them in the comments below or send us something on our socials as well. Uh, we want to help you so you can do this in a way that's the most affordable for you. Mm. Um, you don't need to have massive battery management systems and display screens and everything. Like it actually you don't need all the works ducks quite easy. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of systems that they say you need this and you need that. You really don't. Yeah. Like there's there's always a simpler, easier way to do things and. I feel like we're, we're proving that with this system like it's yeah it's not it's not a lot to it but it does what you need it to do and it, it might be it might be nice to have it all wired up you can probably do that too you can have it all wired up the way you want with switches and lots of stuff but mm. it, it's at the end of the day it has to be practical and if it's practical and you get what the use you want out of it yeah it's happy days i reckon yeah while we're here can you just show them your amazing effort on the wall look how clean it is yeah 
look. But it's nice to have a yeah, nice little, a nice clean finish on something. Like we're big on like presentation and things being nice. Give it a try. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing, bud? I'm just feeding my banana to the girl. It was supposed to be for me, and I thought, I wonder if they'll go for it. Hang on. So many of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one over there that's obviously not hungry. Eight. Yeah. Not very often you get to see this many curlies in one area. They like banana. Fies to it. Well, they're eating Jada's noodles yesterday. I think they just enjoy eating anything they can. That's enough. I want my banana now. You finished sharing? Yeah. <laughs> the rest is for me. Nice and warm in front of you. Yeah, that's good. Ooh. Yeah, it's good. Oh, thank you. Alright. So we've got a couple of, um, I don't know, what do you want to take a couple of half-decent bait runners, Shimano bait runners, or? Yeah, probably the bigger ones, yeah, because we got I've got some um, smaller rods with us that I just take everywhere we go, but... These are 3 pieces even, and pull them apart. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 sweet. Probably right into that. Right into that, got the right hole in there. Yeah, it's right the job. Yeah, no, that'd be perfect. Tackle, yeah. you got some fish and tackle? Yeah, I got some tackle and stuff. Yeah. Mine as well, you never know. <laughs> Miles ago. They're, they're nice to be buried. Yeah, it's like, oh, I swear to God it was there and I just couldn't <laughs> grab it. <laughs> I'd love, love to say at least we have the gear there to get it and if it's my fault that we didn't get it instead of not having the gear at all. Trade. Perfect. Look at that. Oh, actually, before you go, I'm going to give you some rum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> about that? There's like a cat underneath there. There is a cat under there. It's a black cat. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that's not bad luck. <laughs> That'll be the reason why you don't catch any fish tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> If it's a emergency, call triple zero first. Yeah, yeah, if someone's yeah. dying or in great danger. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you're stuck on a sandbar or something's not working, give us a call if no one's life is in danger. Yeah. And then you can work it out between us from there. Yeah, sweet. Okay. Life jackets, paddles, is a uh, chart of the area, just a paper chart. Yep. Then you'll go through the operational area of that in a sec. Um, paddles just open up. If you're gonna stuff on a sandbar, push stuff off. Cool. Paddle back to shore if it breaks down. Yep. Don't break, break, don't break down too far away. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, VHF Look, radio, have you used one of these before? Yes. So channel 16, you know the dural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 16 is, is ship to ship. Go to Telstra? <laughs> yes. Telstra, you should have pretty signal pretty much all the way out, unless you go up around here. Right up and around, around, yeah. So, um, forward reverse. Yeah, cool. Reverse. Uh, it's electric start, so there's no. There's no um, full starting. Very cool. Start. That yeah. makes me happy. Yeah. yeah. Easy as. Yeah, okay. Cassie, oh, question. Who chose your names? Nessie. Yeah, oh, that was, that was Then you'll go through that with you. Yeah. Ah. So this one's named after Dungeness. So Nessie for Dungeness. Ah. The other two boats, we've got Lucy for Lucinda. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. our little boat with a little tiny engine for the people that are unlicensed. Uh, we call her Annie because we've got a little creek as you come in called Gentle Annie. Ah, yeah. so that's nice. cool. I like it. Yeah. That's really good. I wondered, I was like, Nessie, where's this come yeah. from? There'd be a reason for that. No, it's <laughs> got to be some sort of backstory to it. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah, cool. Oh, nice. That's where the names come from. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm here. So, as I was saying, hey guys, um, what's up today? We're just chilling. It's long thing is a fishing rod. So, kids, if you see this sharp thing here, right here. Don't touch it because this is extremely dangerous. Just ignore those noses. It's just bad. So please don't touch this. Put a comment and tell us if your kid has because this is extremely dangerous. So parents, you're probably not going to let your kids touch this, will you? Okay? So, high five in case you are. We'll talk about perfect conditions. We've had absolute pus for the last two days. And now, it is primo. There's like not a breath of wind. The sun's out. A little bit of cloud, but nothing like we've had. But yeah, gonna take this bad boy out today. Super keen. So they got a high tide about 7.30 and a low of two, so we're just trying to get everything packed up and ready to go and we'll head straight down the boat ramp which is only about 200 meters down the road so just pack the car up get the kids sorted and dad and like it we'll, uh, we'll hook in and we'll dad see you down the boat ramp and dad Hooked up and ready to go. Pumped. Look at the weather. So good. Can't wait. Hinchinbrook Island. It's a national park. doing up the kids jackets because we left we were so excited to get out in the water that we forgot to put on their life jackets so Jada's wearing hers now so whenever the boat whenever the kids are in the boat they have to be wearing a life jacket anyone under 12 so I'm gonna do his next and um see what he looks like he's never had one on before at the moment I've been his life jacket and he's my little warps because it's cold with the wind well very happy man right now how cool is this so beautiful out here. That's uh, Hitchinbrook Island just over there, so it's quite a big national park. But um, we were talking to a couple of the locals there yesterday while we were buying bait, or well, Sean was, and then we got told of a couple of little hot spots. 
So um, we're gonna go check them out today. Oh. I'm not really sure what to do. Cause if I do up the bottom, it like goes over his face. <laughs> and he hates it. And if I do this up, you know, I mean it's on, but it's, is it gonna ever stay on if he fell in the water? I don't know now. What's it all about? Look, you got a big collar. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Oh, Baba. Have I got a collar? Oh, yeah, I got a collar too. Yeah. Yours is okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, tell them how you feel. How do you feel? Do you like having a life jacket on? Do you like the life jacket? Baba. What are you doing? It's okay. Yeah. He's like, I can't move. I don't know what to do. I've got a brick on. <laughs> Fish are getting fed. I mean, the birds are getting fed, so we want to get fed. <laughs> Let them go, they bloody... They've all died, these ones. Yeah. Jack's happy. He gets to watch the birds. No screaming. Baby, you'll know about it. Cause he's a bad boy. Yeah? So I feel like this would be a good time for a lure. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Throw him on. Oh, What the hell, babe? There's heaps of them. How come the seagulls are getting them and not us? Because they're built for it. Oh my god. No luck so far. But um, we've come down to Seymour's, what is it, Seymour River? Yeah. Which you got told by the locals if you sit there in the front there and as the tide's coming out, it's normally a good spot. We spent probably about 15 minutes, 20 minutes up there having a go, but it wasn't too much up on the sound or so. We uh, started cruising out, we seen all the birds going crazy and all the bait fish coming up, so we thought we'd pull in and we've been here for the last sort of 20 minutes, half hour, trying to have a crack at those, but um, yeah, still no luck. But um, in saying that, it's still just bloody good to be out on a boat. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it's really So fun. nice. But um, it's a little bit cloudy, but it's funny because just behind us here is the Hitchinbrook um, National Park. And you can see all the clouds and stuff. And it's basically got its own ecosystem, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, we're going to probably punch out towards the mouth there. And there's a, a big jetty up there that's, that's a 5.6 k's or so. Yeah, like it's 5. a long 7, way. 5.76 k's. Yeah, so we're going to go up there and have a bit of a flick around and like get the drone up and show you a bit of the, uh, the scenic. Scenery around us, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. And and Dad might be teaching me how to drive this boat. No, I think we're gonna try course. now. Crash Maybe course, course and uh, driving a boat. First I was time. just about to ask before the GoPro came out. I'm so keen to hear what the audio's like. Yeah. If you could see what's on here, see the big poof. 
It's our first time using it in a windy environment. The poof thing, the dead kitten. What are you doing, Jada? Yeah. Um, can I turn the GoPro somewhere? Look at that mountain up there. It's totally covered. We've been told by a couple of people now that this is Hinchinbrook Island and um, that this whole island has its own ecosystem. So often the rain radar will say it's going to rain at Lucinda, but it never does. It's always here. And what happens on the island versus what happens just over here on the mainland can be entirely different. And they're not even that far away from each other. Okay, so what we're doing is I'm going to hold it. I'm going to try it like this. Oh God, this is like scary. <gasps> So cool! <laughs> How cool was that? Jack doesn't like the drone though, scared the crap out of Jack. Do you miss me at all? Do you think about the things we used to do? No, you couldn't stand tall. So why didn't you, why didn't you call? So many years has gone by. But I think about you, about you all the time Looks like you're changing and all But why didn't you, why didn't you call?
slow before it wouldn't even tell us how deep it was. We had to bring the engine up and stuff, but we got through and um, now it's saying one meter, but there's a boat in front of us and they're much bigger. So if they can do it, we can do it. <laughs> That's my goal anyway. And I watch their engine go back in the water. I'm like, yep, cool, we're good. <laughs> super low in this channel so we've been out for a good half a day we've had a good nudge in it so we'll call it quits today but what an absolute epic day nothing better than being out in the water with the family chucking a few lines in the water and just yeah being out in the water is just great um, I would recommend these guys Hitchbrook uh, High Boat they're literally just around the corner like literally around the corner from the caravan park if you want to know where they are or check them out on the socials on the Facebook and Instagram as well Packages there, they can throw on eskies for you, uh, extra rods, bait, all that sort of jazz. So, for a little extra cost, but yeah, highly recommend them and um, check them out if you're up this way for sure. We've had an absolute cracking day today and can't wait to do it again. Do you want to do me a favour so I can help you put Jack in the car? Yeah. Data. Somehow I ended up carrying this big lump. Oh, I've had like a really bad back the last couple of days and I don't really know why, but um, this obviously isn't gonna help the situation. It's so bloody big and I've got no shoes. And I've got like soft feet, I guess you'd say. Fishing's been pretty slow. Yeah. And the yeah, dog. Out of approximately 50 boats, not including today's count, yeah. I probably had less than three, six, nine boats doing fish. Wow. And they've been pretty ordinary. Yeah. Small catches. Yeah, okay. They've been yeah, right. But that the situation is one of when we have westerlies. Yeah. Fishing shoes are pretty average. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, so I'll snap. Generally, because local consistency caused that to happen. Yeah. That's why the fishing is so poor. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, really. So, basically, babe, don't feel bad. <laughs> it's not just his fishing. <laughs> no, today's going to be very slow. You've got the number six, it's going to be one crab. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, well, so, it's not just us. That's good to know. How good is this? I've never seen a boat ramp before that has its own wash bay, but well, maybe we just don't boat enough, but just a free tap, turn yourself on, wash off. It's a good idea, eh? That's super handy, isn't it? That's 
spraying me with your water. Don't. <laughs> Not the first time. <laughs> That's how you ended up with Jack. <laughs> Towards you, and then the bundles in there. Oh, yeah. This was a bit of water we collected on the way back because she was a little bit choppy. Righty tidy. Lefty Lucy. Yep. That was when Chris reversed at speed. Yeah. And brrr, it was like, oh, here it comes. <laughs> You and me stuck on the ocean now Nothing but waves in this villain in I wanna dry up but you Just keep on going, don't you? I don't even know how we got here All my reasoning have disappeared I wanna bury the hatchet And find the way back to our home Run! Fast! Look at this! So this is the parklands that's right next to where we're staying. So if you look through here, oh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Like, hang on. Right there is our caravan. So it's not owned by the caravan park, but it is right next to it. So I don't let Jada go over here unless she's got other kids with her and she brings a radio just because anyone can come here. But it is a really nice park. So the caravan park backs onto it. Got all the playgrounds. Um, over here there's tables and things and then in the distance as well there's also barbecues so out there look if you can see Chris he's just on the drone at the moment doing some footage for you guys and then that big thing behind him is the jetty that goes out so that goes for 5.76 kilometers it's crazy yeah it's a really nice park like there's just nice grass nice atmosphere it's tidy it's clean really good and this swing is the highlight for sure I remember you being hopeful but the tall waves have worn us down and slowly we are drowning that's why you need to come with me with ever since we put this new microphone on the GoPro all he wants to do is grab it I will not let us fade away It's not a price I wanna pay And it's not too late No, we lost our purpose Chasing all that surplus You were all that I need I feel that we can break free We can still go back there To a place with no cares We can turn this ship around We can turn this ship around All the way back home Oh, these are for Jack. <laughs> if it's anything like yesterday, Jada managed to eat this whole pizza to herself. So we will see. She lost a piece already though, because someone's hungry. <laughs> Calamari, the biggest snitchel you've ever seen for 15. And Jada's halfway through her pizza. She's getting there. You got so close. Yeah, here you go, you have it. I don't want it, I'm okay. No, you need it to go for it. Oh, right. Nom, nom, nom. So, we've just been down the beach today, and um, for whatever reason, I just remembered something that you guys have been asking me about a couple of times now, and it's about how our kids sleep. So, I thought I'd just show you real quick. Jada up here, 
She kind of made her bed. I'll tidy it though. So Jada up here has the top bunk and just a normal blanket cover. We just tuck it in on the far side. So it's under a good probably 15, 20 centimeters and that stops this blanket coming out any further than it needs to. And um, she's always been fine with that. She's always warm enough. She's got her own, her own light up here as well when she needs it. She hangs bits and pieces on this other light. She also has charge points in the corner if she needs them. And the fan. And then underneath is Jack's bed. So this is the custom made fly screen that we had made. It was $60 and it is the best thing we've bought. Seriously, it's made his bed so friendly for him. So he's got his box of toys up the end. Uh, then we've got another one that covers the window space. So he can't poke through here and get out of the window and he can't ruin the fly screens either. And then up the end, he's also got a fan. So these holes here, they're actually quite good because it works out that there's times where I just want to shove a dummy back in his mouth in the middle of the night or whatever it is and I can actually reach through and see him. But the fly screen, once that's closed up, he is totally unable to escape. So it's a really good setup. Then, so if I turn on this light under here, so this box here just holds nappies, wipes, an extra blanket, just bits and pieces that we need for Jack really. So it's just extra storage for him because that's a place that we don't have to access much. Then we've got a little box here which has just his nappies in it, um, nappy bags if we use them. We don't always use these because we've got a bin bag handy and his wipes which are easy accessible. We've then got our laundry basket. This is Jack's bathtub. And then this step just helps at night time. I often use this just to access Jada's bed. So that's the only reason we own this step. And down there is Jada's toys as well. But to be honest, she doesn't really use them very much now. Uh, she's often out on her bike or she's out on her scooter or she's doing pretty much anything that isn't in here. I mean, the last thing she needed out of there was marker pens. It was to draw on rocks with another friend. So still they're out here playing, you know, she doesn't use much of that stuff. Then up here, from a jack perspective again this is kind of like my linen area so i've just been through this a couple of weeks ago this is kind of beach and outing so we got hats um these are all togs between the four of us and then down here are our beach towels and we go with those uh turkish style ones so they're quite skinny so in here there's actually four towels as much as that's like that's one towel so there's nothing to them. They're really good. They dry really fast. They're easy to use. Then up here, we've got Jack's winter gear. So if I need any of that, it's available quick and easy. His like snuggle blankets and an extra sheet for his bed as well. Then this is tea towels and hand towels. And these are like the cloth nappy terry towels. So we use them as spew rags or to clean up lots of things. I think I've got one, two, three, four. I think I've got five of those and they come in handy for lots of different things. Chris uses them on the car. We use them as a floor mat sometimes. We use them for Jack. Like they just get washed and rotated all the time. These are like his sleeping bags. So we put him in these when it's really cold at night because he doesn't leave a blanket on. An extra bathroom mat and of course your peg hanger that hangs outside if you've got to hang up extra washing. But that's basically our linen uh, slash extra things for Jack, really. But having Jack on bar board, it's not that bad. Um, you've just got to be prepared for it. Like, you just need to think it through. Like, I have a kid. How many nappies do I need? You know, how many wipes do I need? Um, sleep time as well. You know, you just got to try and maintain those sleep, rout sleep routines as much as you can. If they sleep at most times, 9 o'clock in the morning, try and make sure he can sleep at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, we often in this area will shut that window up entirely and close that up and put his fan on that's in here as well. So that's how he gets his breeze through there. And then I will shut this bathroom door so that he doesn't get the light through this window either. Because I find if there's lots of interruptions, he just doesn't sleep very well. But um, yeah, hopefully that helps some of you out there anyway. Because I know we've had a few people who are getting on the road with newborns or very young children. And they were wondering what we do with Jack. So let me know. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. I'd love to help you. If there's something here you've seen and you just, I didn't explain it enough or anything, let me know. And I'll definitely get back to you.
One more thing I'll add with Jack is overnight he still wakes up and he wants bottles. So it's anywhere from one or two times a night. Um, it doesn't wake Jada up. She's really good. She's a very heavy sleeper. And Chris and I have got into quite a routine now that works quite well. But if we're on grid, the microwave is our first stop. Jack always has a warm bottle. He's not a fan of the cold bottle. So the microwave is always used overnight. 20 seconds and you've got a nice hot bottle. But if you ever go off grid or you go out for the day and you're like, how do we keep these bottles warm for so long? Um, this is your, like, this will solve all of your problems. Just a thermo. Um, we use ours whenever we go out for a full day outing or when we're off grid. So you only have to boil water once every two to three days and you can fill this up. So the bottle will take out anywhere from 30 to 50 mils, depending on how hot this still is and fill it with the hot water. And then instantly you've got your warm bottle ready to go. So if you're off grid overnight, that's also a quick and easy fix for you so that you can give your kid a bottle in the middle of the night and have it warm still. So yeah, they're expensive these thermos they really are but they're well worth the money I was a bit like mm, I don't know if I want to spend that but they are really good I definitely recommend them if you're in the market I'm a very happy camper right now look oh it's blurry the cotton's growing there's only one but it's working yay just saying. Oh, wow. You thought I didn't have a green thumb. No, it's still early days. But there's one coming out. That's pretty cool, isn't it? We're growing cotton. Very good. How cool is that? That is pretty cool. <laughs> From the side of the road. Yeah. Yeah. And emerald. It's an emerald yeah. infused cotton plant. It's like a thousand kilometers ago. What an episode we have coming up for you. We checked out Kaluma National Park and hung out with another traveling family. Chris danced with another drone and we finally made it to the rock slides. We saw the blue water of Cardwell and we had our first disaster with the cartridge toilet. Oof. It's disgusting. 